Uh, the economy was the number one issue reported by most American voters, and rebuilding it from the damage caused by the coronavirus pandemic will be an uphill battle. Uh, Kate, <laughs> Kate Moody, our business editor, joins me uh, with more about the economy. Alison, look, Joe Biden is inheriting a really, really frail economy here. Uh, while Trump was elected four years ago during a period when growth was strong and unemployment was low, uh, those trends continued throughout his administration until the pandemic hit. And now Joe Biden is going to have to pick up the pieces here. Uh, the U.S. economy is expected to shrink nearly 4% for 2020 as a whole before rebounding around 3.5% next year. But economists and the Federal Reserve uh, say that that could really be thrown off track without another round of coronavirus stimulus. Uh, many of the measures that were providing aid for households and businesses that was passed back in March have expired, and lawmakers have been unable to break a deadlock since then on what should happen next. Of course, the state of the economy also very, very much linked to the coronavirus pandemic, getting it under control. Uh, we're currently seeing the infection rate in the United States continuing to soar. We know Joe Biden is already putting together a coronavirus task force uh, to try and reverse that trend. Uh, and it's going to be crucial to rebuilding economic growth and consumer confidence. Consumer spending in the U.S. is crucial. It's worth around 70 percent uh, of economic activity. So people really need to feel confident in their jobs and in their own financial future before they open up their wallets again. Uh, there's also going to be broader challenges for the, for the president-elect, of course, notably when it comes to trade. Uh, Donald Trump, of course, uh, launched trade disputes with China, but also with some traditional allies like the EU. Uh, we think the president-elect Biden plans to continue this fairly firm line when it comes to China. Uh, we're not expecting him to immediately lift the tariffs that have been imposed on billions of dollars worth of Chinese goods. Uh, but he has said he wants a multilateral approach, and so that could include closer ties with the EU and possibly a shift of strategy there. Okay, you mentioned the stimulus. Lawmakers were divided on it before the election. Uh, where do things stand now? Well, there's a little bit of speculation that after those months of gridlock, lawmakers could try to push something through now by the end of the year, that Republicans could try to frame that as a final victory for the Trump administration. Uh, however, both Nancy Pelosi and Mitch McConnell have been holding firm to their guns so far. Uh, they were speaking about this on Friday and really showed no signs of budging. McConnell arguing that the economy is starting to grow again and therefore needs more limited stimulus. Uh, Pelosi saying that a wide-reaching plan is needed to foster that growth. Uh, before before the election, the Senate uh, Republicans had tried to pass a $500 billion bill. House Democrats were looking at a $2.2 trillion package. So a huge difference in the numbers that we're talking about here. Uh, some of the top areas of division here, uh, extending more generous unemployment benefits, both in the amount of money that unemployed Americans can get and the amount of time that they can claim them for. Uh, how to support small businesses that are still struggling during the pandemic. Should there be another round of stimulus checks to American taxpayers? That's one area where there seems to be the most bipartisan support so far. Uh, and should there be another round of targeted aid for airlines. Uh, now, some of that could be resolved by the time Joe Biden is actually sworn in in January, but ensuring that there's enough support for households, for businesses, for the economy as a whole is going to be a longer running challenge. It's going to mark not just the first year of his administration, but the effects, of course, are going to last much longer. One, well, as you were saying there, too, the labor market has been severely battered by the pandemic. How are things standing as they are now? Well, look, nearly 50 million people lost their jobs in the initial months of the pandemic. Pandemic. Uh, more than half of them have been hired back. There have been a huge amount of movement in the U.S. labor market in recent months. Uh, on Friday, new data confirmed the unemployment rate had dropped from around 14 uh, percent, which was what we saw a high of back in April, to just under 7 percent in October. Uh, just for comparison, four years ago when Trump was elected, the unemployment rate stood at 4.7 percent. And at the beginning of 2020, before the pandemic hit, it was at a decade's low 3.6 percent. So this is a pretty astonishing recovery. Uh, but it's one that doesn't necessarily reflect all the challenges that are still faced here. Nearly 22 million Americans are still claiming unemployment benefits, uh, either under these regular state programs, extended relief, or the emergency pandemic support programs. Some of those measures are running out. A lot of these people are finding themselves in precarious financial situations. Mm -hmm. uh, a new Pew Research Center survey found that overall one in four American adults said they were having trouble paying their bills since the start of the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, economists saying many, many people could remain out of work for the medium to long term. So rebuilding this strong labor market that existed four years ago and even as, as quickly as a year ago uh, is certainly going to be one of the top issues for Joe Biden's administration.